In the late 1950s and early 1960s, during the Cold War, the United States Air Force embarked on a highly classified endeavor known as Project 1794. This ambitious project aimed to develop a flying saucer-like aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. Conceived as a response to the need for innovative aircraft designs with superior speed, maneuverability, and military applications, Project 1794 remains an intriguing chapter in aviation history. Join us as we explore the incredible features of Project 1794, the U.S. military's VZ-9 Avrocar flying saucer. The years following World War II were marked by intense geopolitical tension between the United States and the Soviet Union, a period commonly referred to as the Cold War. As both superpowers sought to gain technological, military, and strategic advantages over each other, various innovative projects emerged. These initiatives were often shrouded in secrecy, and some pushed conventional technology's boundaries. One area where this quest for superiority was evident was in aviation. The rapid evolution of aircraft technology during this era saw the development of jet engines, supersonic flight, and exploration into new aircraft forms. Amid this backdrop, the United States Air Force initiated Project 1794 to create a revolutionary aircraft capable of VTOL and high-speed flight. While traditional aircraft, such as fighter planes and bombers, played crucial roles in military operations, there was a growing curiosity about the potential advantages of alternative aircraft configurations. The concept of a flying, saucer-like vehicle capable of hovering, vertical takeoff and landing, and high-speed horizontal flight captured the imagination of military planners. The primary objectives of Project 1794 were to develop a flying, saucer-shaped aircraft with VTOL capabilities, achieve high-speed horizontal flight, explore the potential military applications of such an innovative aircraft, and gain a strategic edge over potential adversaries. Project 1794 was envisioned as a response to the need for unconventional aircraft designs that could outperform traditional planes in terms of speed, maneuverability, and versatility in various military scenarios. To bring the vision of Project 1794 to life, the United States Air Force selected Avro Canada as the contractor responsible for its development. Avro Canada, a British Hawker Siddeley Group subsidiary was chosen for its aircraft design and manufacturing expertise. The company had previously worked on successful aviation projects, and its involvement was expected to accelerate the development of the flying saucer concept. The selection of Avro Canada was not made in isolation. It was part of a broader collaboration with the Hawker Siddeley Group. This partnership brought together the technical capabilities of Avro Canada and the resources of Hawker Siddeley to support the ambitious goals of Project 1794. The collaboration aimed to leverage the collective expertise of both entities to create a groundbreaking aircraft. At the heart of Project 1794 was the Avrocar, a disc-shaped aircraft resembling the popular image of a flying saucer. The Avrocar's design was unconventional, featuring a central cockpit for the pilot and a large, circular platform that generated lift and thrust. The circular design was aesthetically distinctive and served specific functional purposes. Jack Frost, also known as John Carver Meadows Frost, was a British aircraft designer and the mastermind behind the Avrocar flying saucer. He worked on experimental supersonic aircraft for the United Kingdom and Canada's first fighter jet project, the CF-100. While working on the CF-100 research team, he created a special projects group, a collective of experimental designers and engineers from Avro Canada's headquarters who worked on this secret creative project with him. The Avrocar incorporated several key features and innovations. The Special Projects Group considered several vertical takeoff and landing designs. Still, all featured the disc-like shape suggested at the beginning of the project. They decided their result needed a huge, supersonic, disc-shaped fighter. The design had a raised section in the middle on top of the engine, and its intake was covered with horizontal slats to admit air. The concept developed indicated performance estimates that sounded encouraging to the U.S., with the potential to reach Mach 3.5 at altitudes of around 100,000 feet 
or 30,000 meters. Not all U.S. Air Force members supported the project. Several branches wanted to secure funding for experimental pet projects, such as nuclear-powered aircraft. At first, the idea was to use a new engine made of six Armstrong Siddeley Viper engines on the outer rim of a rotor. This new engine, PV-704, used a stopgap design tested with disastrous results, catching fire on three occasions. It was so unreliable that the staff was afraid of testing it too, even when these tests were conducted behind a bulletproof glass and steel booth. A final test of this engine took place in 1956, resulting in the test engine running out of control and exploding, which led to the pursuit of less dangerous alternatives. While the engine concept was being revised, the research team decided to build a proof-of-concept, smaller version of the aircraft that they named Avracar. The idea of a smaller prototype for the U.S. Air Force was pitched. The project received a $2 million joint services budget for two models. Later on, the Air Force added $700,000 directed from the 606A program and $1.77 million to develop the second model. The research team was to build an aerodynamic test bed for the WS-606 final model. The initial requirements expected from the Avracar proof of concept were that it could hover for 10 minutes in ground effect with a range of 25 miles or 40 kilometers and a payload of 1,000 pounds or 450 kilograms. Unfortunately for the flying saucer, it would underperform. Despite its innovative design, the Avracar faced numerous technical challenges, particularly stability and control. The circular shape intended to provide lift and stability also posed significant aerodynamic issues. Engineers grappled with the complexities of controlling an aircraft with such an unconventional design. Another significant challenge was noise. The Avracar generated considerable noise during operation, which was not only a technical concern, but also a practical limitation for military use. The aircraft was susceptible to a phenomenon known as sonic resonance, which could potentially compromise its structural integrity. Overcoming these challenges was critical for Avracar to achieve its intended performance and meet the demanding requirements of Project 1794. The Avro aircraft plant in Ontario, Canada, played a pivotal role in the early stages of Project 1794's development. This facility, operated by Avro Canada, was selected as the site for the initial testing of the Avrocar prototypes. The choice of this location was not incidental, it was strategically significant for several reasons. The remote location of the Avro aircraft plant offered a degree of secrecy, which was paramount given the classified nature of the project. Conducting initial tests away from prying eyes helped maintain confidentiality. The plant's facilities were well equipped for research and development, providing the necessary infrastructure for Avracar's early testing and refinement. Avracar No. 58, 7055, was the first out of the Malton, Mississauga factory in May 1959. Using the static hover rig, the Special Projects Group tested the vehicle. Several problems were quickly identified. The exhaust was sending hot gas straight into the intakes used to hover which, in turn, reduced the engine thrust. Furthermore, as projected by the initial separate technology tests, the fan-generated lift only covered a small area of the vehicle's surface. The combination of these factors meant the Avracar could only carry 3,150 pounds, or 1,430 kilograms, above ground. At the same time, the vehicle's empty weight was 4,285 pounds, or 1,944 kilograms. Since the Avracar could lift less than it weighed, it could not hover above the ground. Following this disappointing performance, it was sent to Moffett Field, California, so that the NASA Ames Research Center could test its abilities in controlled wind tunnel tests. NASA's findings were just as discouraging. The aircraft was difficult to control during high-speed flight and was incredibly unstable. These findings were reaffirmed by flight tests using the second Avracar prototype. Modifications ensued, resulting in the first free flight test on November 12, 1959. There were still several issues that had to be overcome. First, the control system for the nozzle could have been more efficient. Second, problems with the spoilers made the vehicle difficult to lift, so it would automatically begin to lose altitude after reaching a certain height. 
Only five initial test flights were conducted, resulting in 18.5 hours of total flight time. On December 5, 1959, testing was temporarily halted. Still convinced that the concept could work, Frost proposed a new program that would rework the propulsion and control systems for the second Avrocar model. The first model underwent modifications based on the findings of the Ames Research Center, and its testing was resumed in April 1961. The resulting design yielded greater control over its hover capabilities and better lift. Speed was increased to 100 knots, or 190 kilometers per hour, instead of the 56 kilometers per hour it had displayed. Yet issues with the aircraft's pitch remained, and the Avrocar's nose tilted upward during flight. The request to rework the systems on the second Avrocar went through, and they were modified and tested. The aircraft underperformed with a maximum speed of 20 knots, or 37 kilometers per hour. Still, they passed an altitude test, showing it could travel over an 18-inch deep ditch while hovering. The second Avrocar was still unable to gain much altitude since surpassing the critical height, which resulted in significant instability. The report on these tests also pointed out uncontrollable roll and pitch movements, which the Special Projects Group could not fix. After all these attempts, the second prototype of the Avrocar logged around 75 test flight hours. The project seemed like an absolute failure since the car could only hover above the ground and not fly. The design limited its speed while making it unbearably hot and noisy, meaning any military use would have to account for a lack of basic stealth. Requests for further modifications were made again. Rather than continue with the modifications proposed by the research team, the Avrocar was cancelled in December 1961. The United States Air Force faced a complex and challenging decision regarding the future of Project 1794, an endeavor that had once held great promise but was now plagued by escalating costs, technical limitations and uncertain prospects for success. This marked a turning point in the project's history, ultimately leading to its official cancellation and the storage of the Avrocar prototypes. One of the primary factors that contributed to the cancellation of Project 1794 was the ever-increasing financial burden it placed on the U.S. Air Force. Developing revolutionary aircraft concepts, especially those as groundbreaking as the Avrocar, often comes with unforeseen costs. As the project progressed, it became evident that the financial investment required to address technical challenges and achieve a functional aircraft was spiraling out of control. The U.S. Air Force had to weigh the potential benefits of the Avrocar against the mounting budgetary strain it posed. The Avrocar, with its unconventional saucer-like design, presented a myriad of technical challenges that proved difficult to overcome. Achieving stable and controlled flight was an elusive goal, particularly during the transition from vertical takeoff to horizontal flight. The circular wing's aerodynamic properties, which differed significantly from traditional aircraft, created stability, lift, and control issues. Engineers and test pilots grappled with these challenges, leading to a protracted development process. Moreover, Avrocar's propulsion system, which relied on multiple engines to generate the necessary thrust for vertical takeoff and horizontal flight, had encountered its share of technical setbacks. Coordinating these engines to work seamlessly in various flight regimes was a formidable task, and reliability issues surfaced during testing. As the project advanced and technical challenges persisted, doubts emerged about Avrocar's viability as a practical military aircraft. The initial excitement and anticipation surrounding the flying, saucer-like design gradually gave way to skepticism. The U.S. Air Force leadership had to consider whether Avrocar could realistically meet the military's stringent operational requirements and demands. The uncertain prospects for success became a significant factor in the decision-making process. The U.S. Air Force needed help to allocate resources to a project with diminishing returns or explore alternative avenues that might yield more promising results for national defense. While the cancellation of Project 1794 was undoubtedly disappointing for those who had invested years of effort and expertise in its development, it was a decision made with the best interests of national defense and fiscal responsibility in mind. The U.S. Air Force would redirect its resources and efforts toward other aviation programs that held greater promise for meeting the evolving needs of the military. 
Executives at Avro Canada still believed in the progress made and sought to secure Canadian or international funding for further vertical takeoff and landing disc aircraft or a lift jet version. Still, they found no interest and closed the special projects group. The two models of the Avrocar produced belonged to the United States, but the second model was shipped to Canada for display. After being exposed to the elements outdoors, it was sent to the U.S. Army Transportation Museum in Virginia for restoration. The first Avrocar was sent to the Maryland National Air and Space Museum. That was in storage until the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Ohio borrowed it. After being restored, it was put on display and is currently housed at the Presidential Aircraft Gallery. While Project 1794 may have faced cancellation, its legacy endured, leaving a lasting impact on various aspects of aviation and technology. Beyond its immediate challenges and setbacks, the project significantly contributed to innovation, ground effect research, stealth technology, and public awareness of aviation advancements. The Avrocar's circular design had significant implications for ground effect aerodynamics and VTOL technology. During its development and testing phases, researchers dug into the unique aerodynamic properties of the circular wing. This research contributed valuable insights into the ground effect, which occurs when an aircraft flies close to the ground, resulting in increased lift and efficiency. These findings had broader implications for developing VTOL and hovercraft technologies, which rely on ground effect principles to achieve stable flight near the surface. One of the unexpected challenges encountered during Avrocar testing was the noise generated by its multiple engines. This noise factor prompted further research into noise reduction techniques and technologies. As a result, Project 1794 indirectly contributed to the advancement of stealth technology. Pursuing quieter propulsion systems and more aerodynamically efficient designs played a role in developing aircraft with reduced radar cross-sections ultimately leading to stealth aircraft like the F-117 Nighthawk and the B-2 Spirit. The Avrocar's distinctive appearance, resembling a flying saucer, captured the public's imagination and left an indelible mark on popular culture. During an era when UFO sightings were a topic of fascination and intrigue, Avrocar's resemblance to descriptions of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, only heightened public interest. The aircraft became a cultural symbol, frequently referenced in aviation and space exploration discussions. Its influence extended to depictions of UFOs in popular media, contributing to the enduring fascination with extraterrestrial encounters. The Avrocar's flying saucer-like appearance combined with its initial secrecy created an aura of mystery and intrigue that extended well beyond the confines of the aviation and military communities. This unique design and the clandestine nature of its development inadvertently fueled speculation and curiosity, leading to instances of mistaken identification by UFO enthusiasts and the public. Here we delve into UFO speculation surrounding the Avrocar and its impact on the aircraft and Project 1794. To understand the context of the VZ-9's misidentification, it's essential to consider the broader cultural backdrop of the 1950s and 1960s. This era was marked by a significant UFO craze, characterized by a surge in reported UFO sightings, claims of extraterrestrial encounters, and widespread public interest in the possibility of alien visitations. Popular media, including movies, books, and television shows, often depict UFOs as flying saucer-like objects, further ingraining this image in the public consciousness. During its early stages of development, Project 1794 was shrouded in secrecy, which was a common practice for military aviation projects at the time. The Avrocar's unique design and its limited information only fueled speculation. The U.S. military and Avro engineers conducted tests away from prying eyes, adding to the project's mystery. As rumors and speculations about unidentified flying objects, UFOs, abounded, some UFO enthusiasts mistakenly identified the Avrocar as potential evidence of extraterrestrial spacecraft. The Avrocar's saucer-like shape closely resembles the popular image of UFOs depicted in the media and eyewitness accounts. This misinterpretation added to the mystique surrounding both the Avrocar and Project 1794. The misidentification of the Avrocar as a UFO led to heightened public interest and speculation, 
Newspapers and magazines picked up on the story, often sensationalizing it and contributing to the narrative of flying saucers being sighted. Reports of UFO sightings near aviation test facilities, including the Avro aircraft plant in Ontario, Canada, further fueled these speculations. While the UFO speculation surrounding the Avrocar may have seemed far-fetched to those involved in the project, it had positive and negative consequences. On the one hand, the misidentification brought significant attention to the aircraft in Project 1794, raising awareness of the project in popular culture. This heightened visibility may have contributed to increased funding and support from government agencies. However, on the other hand, the association with UFOs and extraterrestrial claims also led to skepticism and ridicule. Some critics dismissed Project 1794 as a government cover-up for UFO activities, undermining its credibility in certain circles. In the years following the cancellation of Project 1794, the veil of secrecy that had shrouded the project began to lift. Declassification efforts by the U.S. government allowed historians and researchers to access documents related to the project. This newfound transparency provided a clearer understanding of the motivations, challenges, and outcomes of Project 1794. From a historical perspective, the Avrocar and Project 1794 serve as a reminder of the era's ambitious experimentation and the drive to push the boundaries of aviation technology. While the Avrocar did not achieve its objectives, it remains a fascinating example of mid-20th century aircraft design and the pursuit of unconventional aviation concepts. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.